babies. Their very vulnerability makes them irresistible. On their slim shoulders, they carry the hopes of a generation. They are their parents' only chance for immortality. Families are designed for the young, yet family life is filled with tragedy. Brutality. And the sweetest of pleasures. Raising the young is life's greatest challenge. Parents struggle to care for and feed their offspring, whether it means spilling milk or blood. Parents must defend their young from a world of troubles and teach them the skills they'll need to survive. In return, children bring a special joy and a new meaning to life. For out of the eternal bond between child and parent comes the most transcendent of emotions. By exploring nature's adventures in child rearing, precious insight into our own lives can be found in the family life of animals. she rises. With tentacled arms 15 feet in length, the giant octopus may seem a creature of nightmare, but she is gentle at heart. For years she has stalked the reef preparing herself for what will be the single most important act of her life. In a secret lair in the rocky reef, she has laid her eggs. She breeds but once. These precious eggs are her only chance that part of her will live into the future. She has held them in her tentacled embrace for half a year. She has not left them for an instant, not even to eat. Finally, the moment she has lived for has come. Her miniature offspring pulse away, but childhood is always a time of great peril. They will be a feast for others, but they were born with the skills they need to survive, if they have luck as well. The octopus produced enough young so that some are bound to escape the daily gauntlet of hungry mouths. But their mother will never know their fates. She's been drained of life by the effort of procreation. She is food herself now for impatient fish.
Dying is the ultimate sacrifice for one's young. But if just one of the tens of thousands of these tiny creatures escapes to grow into a giant like its mother, a ghostly flyer through deep waters, her sacrifice won't be in vain. She will live on through her child and her grandchildren after that. The family lives of all animals have the same purpose, to help the young survive to have families of their own, continuing their parents' genetic line. How each animal does this reflects their varied ways of life. For elephant seals, it means leaving home. While at sea, they spend 90% of their lives diving thousands of feet deep into the abyss to feast on squid. But now, the drive to reproduce is calling this female to shore. She has lots of company. Hundreds of females have been drawn to this place at this time to give birth. The pup must learn to tell its mother's call from all others, because only its mother will provide it with something it needs to survive. Milk. Milk creates a special bond between mother and child. Since only mothers produce milk, it's only natural females do most of the parenting among mammals. Seal milk is the richest in the world, more than 50% fat. The reason is that while the pup is nourished, the mother starves, fasting for the whole time she cares for her baby, while finding comfort in its closeness. But the bulls are here too, for the rookery is more than a nursery. It's a battleground. Built for this battle, they fight for a chance to mate. A beach master may father more than a hundred pups in a single season. Males devote their lives to siring as many pups as they can. The fate of any one pup means little to them. They hardly notice the ones they trample in their rush to defend their harem. But if a mother loses a pup, she loses a lot. She's invested a year in her baby already, one of only 10 or so she'll bear in her lifetime. Male and female may differ radically in their bodies, behavior, and strategies, but both sexes have been designed to maximize the numbers of offspring they leave behind. After a month of solid nursing, the mother must return to the sea to feed herself. She leaves her baby behind. At triple its birth weight, it's well equipped for life on its own. Instinct supplies the know-how, its developing body the ability to survive. She'll probably never see him again, but she'll return next year. She already carries within her the embryo that will grow into her next pup. Just a month old, and the pup's family days are already over. They never know their fathers and get nothing from them, except for genes capable of building a massive beach master. But sometimes it takes the heroic efforts of both parents to raise their young, especially when they do it under the most extreme conditions on Earth. Antarctica. As winter sets in, as every other creature rushes north to warmer climes, one animal gathers here in force. 
Here on the face of the frozen sea at the bottom of the earth is the home of the Emperor Penguins. They've assembled here for one unbelievable purpose, to hatch their eggs. As soon as the female lays her single egg, she turns it over to the father. If exposed for just a minute to this cold, the tiny embryo inside would die. Once the egg is cradled on its father's feet and covered by the warm duvet of his brood pouch, the mother heads off for the open sea to refuel. Only the father must face the dark Antarctic winter. When the emperors brood their eggs here, there are no predators. Their only enemy is the killing cold. Temperatures plunge to 60 below. Winds blast at 70 miles an hour, ripping away bodily warmth. Their only protection is their insulating fat and their own kind. They take turns at the perimeter, all the while trying to work their way back into the warmth of the pack. <laughs> Having endured the worst weather on Earth, they greet the returning sun. In the clear light of springtime's first dawn, more than two months of continuous sacrifice finally pays off. The father can offer only a bit of oily gruel extracted from his own gut. Without more nourishment, neither chick nor father can last much longer. Then, just in the nick of time, true to their promise, the mothers return. They come as far as 100 miles over the sea ice, step by waddling step. They've grown fat on the rich bounty of Antarctic waters. After all, they've been eating for two. Each father calls out, desperate to reunite with his mate. Even after months of separation, she instantly recognizes his voice and announces her return with a ritual greeting. Her mate now weighs half what he did when he arrived, but his sacrifice was well worth it. He proudly introduces mom to her downy offspring for the first time. The first order of business is to feed the chick. The mother regurgitates a rich fishy stew. Now it's the mother's turn to tend the chick, but old habits die hard. Since the egg was laid, the father has been solely responsible for their offspring, and he gives it up only begrudgingly. Once the female has possession, the father can attend to his own needs at last. Now it is his turn to trek to the edge of ice and his first meal in four months. He has endured starvation and freezing cold, but he did what he had to do to keep his genetic line alive through one more generation.
Happily nestled on its mother's feet, the chick thrives on rich meals of half-digested fish. When she runs out of food, the mother leaves for groceries, another hundred mile trek across the ice. Both parents continue to ferry fish from the sea to their chick. Left alone, the chicks huddle together as their fathers did. Finally, after seven months of constant tending, when the chicks are as round and fat as bowling balls, their parents leave them to their own devices. Then, just as the ice begins to splinter in summer's warmth, they're ready to dive into the sea for the first time. Because of the heroic sacrifices made by both their parents, these fledglings have not only survived, but thrived in one of the harshest environments on Earth. Other parents take a different approach, physically creating a safe haven for their young ones to protect them from nature's extremes. Florida's Everglades is one of the world's great wetlands. But in the dry season, it turns into a muddy pavement where fish are caught in shrinking pools. This turtle is more fortunate. It can go in search of water. But this oasis comes with a catch. It's a gator hole, dug and deepened by the most dangerous animal in the Everglades. Still in the dry season, it becomes a haven for the other wildlife that share the alligator's world. Otters find the fishing excellent here as do the many kinds of fish-eating birds that nest in the overhanging trees. The gator hole is not just a well-stocked larder, it's a nursery. The gator's eggs are incubating within a warm mound of rotting vegetation she scraped together, a nest that attracts the turtle as well. Now is her chance. By laying her own eggs in the nest, the turtle hopes to take advantage of the gator's hard work and fierce defense of her brood. A great plan if she can manage to escape the gator herself. Her shell bears the scars of her encounter, but the turtle is unharmed. Weeks later, the calls of her hatchlings attract the hovering gator. The baby turtles are also hatching. They could easily be devoured by their unwitting nurse. But it's only the little gators that concern their mother. She carefully extracts her tiny newborn and ever so gently carries them to water. Jaws designed to bring death now cradle new life. With the gator intent upon her own hatchlings, the baby turtles make their break for freedom. The young
young gators ride out the dry season on their mother's broad muzzle and back. In this homemade sanctuary, they are safe to hone their inborn hunting skills. By creating a safe haven for her growing brood, the gator gives them a chance to survive until they're big enough to avoid some of life's perils. But many animals bear their young directly into a world of trouble. When the great herds of wildebeest bear their young, all of Africa's hungry eyes turn their way. A newborn wildebeest wills its wobbling legs into action. Instinctively, it searches for its mother's milk while the mother licks it, memorizing her baby's scent. In the first moments of life, they solidify their bond. The mother is all there is between life and an early death. This is tough love. In just 15 minutes, the calf must learn to keep up with its mother. Alone, a calf hasn't a chance. The cheetah often loses its kills to more formidable predators. But wild dogs prefer to catch their own meat. They're the most efficient predators in Africa. What they lack in size, they make up for in teamwork. But one mother does her best to fight the odds. She can hardly believe her luck. The dogs seem to have decided it's just not worth the effort. She simply walks away. A mother has saved her offspring, and with it, her bridge to the future. The passion of parenthood lends courage to the meek, ferocity to the strong. For if raising the hunted is hard, providing for young hunters is even harder. Especially when you're not the only one on the prowl. Again, four out of five solo hunts end in failure. Only the safety net of its family makes a lion's difficult life possible. Lion families are called prides, and it's easy to see why. This proud lady is a grandmother, and the pride is her family. Daughters, nieces, granddaughters, and their young. 
Sharing a common genetic heritage, they live communally. So closely are they related, the females suckle each other's cubs. Nieces and nephews also carry many of the same genes. One male has sired all the cubs. Years ago, he fought for the chance to be the pride patriarch, a position most male lions never attain. Life is easy for the resident male of a pride. The pride lionesses not only provide the male with offspring, they provide him with meat. The buffalo isn't cowed by a lone lioness. Fast and powerful, armed with sharp horns, it too can be deadly. At last, another pride lioness comes to the rescue. It takes four lionesses to subdue the buffalo. A kiss of death suffocates the great beast. A mother calls her cubs to the kill. Feeding the young is never easy. As many as half of all lion cubs actually die of starvation. They'll have to fight for their share of this beast. Among lions, it is the strongest that always eat first. So it is the strongest that survive to carry on the line when food is scarce. But with a kill this large, there's plenty for everyone. Without the cooperation of the pride, there would be no carcass to fight over. The male is larger than the females and would normally eat first. Lately, though, he lacks an appetite. He's plagued by a wound that refuses to heal. Once a pride male weakens, his days are numbered. He has entered the short twilight of his time. cover of darkness, a pair of strange males roar their challenge. The old patriarch answers, but lacks the strength of his convictions. In the night comes the coup. With the new dawn begins a new chapter in the Pride's family history.
The pride is now under the sway of a pair of strangers, young males just entering into their prime. They're brothers. Their shared genes make them natural allies in the battle for pride leadership. Together they fought for a chance to breed with the pride's females, a chance many males never get. They meet one of their new lionesses, checking to see if she's ready to mate. They're anxious to begin fathering cubs. Their breeding careers only last a few years before they'll be ousted themselves by younger males. But this female has young cubs and won't come into estrus until after they're weaned, still months away. Tragic timing for this animal family. The cubs are unwitting obstacles to the male's urgent need to breed. Obstacles all too easy to remove. It is not anger or evil that drives the males, but the irresistible drive to reproduce. While the female is away hunting, one by one, her tiny offspring are snuffed out. She finds the bloody evidence of the deed upon her return from the hunt. The scent is unmistakable. It was her cub. Without the stimulus of its suckling, she'll soon come into heat again. It seems wrong that the same males who killed her cubs will father her next litter, but her future offspring will benefit from this. Not only will they inherit genes capable of building such magnificent animals, but they'll be protected by a pair of fit young fathers who will repel strange males for years to come. Nine months later, and a tiny baby, its eyes still closed, gets ready to meet its family. When its eyes open, it'll meet a whole passel of new cubs, growing up safe and happy within the pride. The genetic lines of the lionesses and the young brothers are now intertwined in a new generation. Though the family life of predators is haunted by violence and hardship, these are days of peace and joy within the pride. But not even a whole pride of lions can stand in the way of an elephant family. The strength of their families holds even baby elephants above the usual conflicts between predator and prey. These vultures aren't harbingers of death, but heralds of new life. They're feeding on an afterbirth. A calf has been born into a close family. Like all mammals, his first and most intimate relationship will be with his mother. Only she will suckle him. Not only will she feed and protect him, she'll shower him with tender affection. His sister, too, will stay by his side. The urge to mother runs strong among female elephants.
His mother is the family's matriarch, the living repository of knowledge passed down through the generations. Daughters benefit from their mother's decades of experience coping with drought or flood, predators or pregnancy. There are no adult males in his family. Bulls rarely mingle with the female-run herds, except to mate. A young male stays with his kin until he reaches adolescence, but his high spirits will test the female's patience long before that. His female relatives spend their whole lives within the caring atmosphere of the family. Older sisters and female cousins will be his babysitters. They get essential practice at parenting while giving the mothers time to refuel. Their charges can be a handful. Chasing wildebeest is a favorite sport. And the excitement is contagious. But close behind, keeping an eye on Junior, as always, comes Big Sister. In the dry season, the matriarch leads her family on a trek she learned from the matriarch before her. Memory, not instinct, brings them to water. For the little ones, it's a long reach. The new baby slips and becomes mired in the glutinous mud. The adults trumpet, raising the alarm. Mother and aunts rush to the baby's aid. Tusks are put to good use, as are trunks and forefeet delicately maneuvered. the baby is freed, shaken but unharmed. His family closes ranks protectively around him. Even though it is the largest land animal, an elephant needs its family in order to survive the pitfalls of childhood. The gathering dusk finds another baby stuck in the mud, but this one is alone. Tragically, it has somehow become separated from its family. A hungry hyena hears its plaintive cries. Without the protection of its family, it's easy prey. Then out of the dark, a family thunders to the rescue. Surprisingly, they are not the baby's relatives, yet they found the infant's distress calls impossible to ignore. The baby is soon up and running, dazed and delighted by its rescue. Morning finds the foundling in tow, following his adoptive mother and her natural offspring. He has no intention of sharing his mother's affection, nor her milk. By taking on the responsibility of raising another calf, the mother could jeopardize her own infant's welfare. But her maternal drive is so strong, she simply could not leave a baby, however unrelated, to die. Eventually, with elephantine patience, peace prevails. The protective wings of the family are stretched over one more little one. The drought brings elephant families together at a water hole, each of them following its own matriarch to the oasis.
Both babies have had terrifying experiences in the mud, so it's no wonder they must be coaxed in for a bath. Though the mother's own baby follows her in, the adopted orphan needs some more gentle persuasion. between elephants are as strong and long-lived as the animals themselves, but they are based on blood. Only rarely is an unrelated animal invited into the fold. There are animals, however, who make a practice of allowing strangers into the family. They even entrust their children to them. Tiny puppets of the Kalahari, a family of meerkats, greets the dawn. As both hunter and hunted, life is doubly hard. The secret to their survival is cooperation. Meerkats are team players, forming extended families that stretch well beyond bloodlines. The dominant female suckles her babies briefly, then she's off. Not only is she a working mom, she's the boss. She leads the troop on a foray, digging feverishly for small burrowing creatures. But this heads down hunting technique makes them easy prey. So they post a lookout who scans the desert landscape for predators. As long as they hear his reassuring chirps, they continue their frenetic search for food. A nanny is left behind to look after the babies. The kittens are often unrelated to their sitters, who are usually young emigres. The sitters earn their place in the family by helping raise the kittens, gently retrieving those that stray too far. Before long, young meerkats begin accompanying their sitters on hunts. Not only do they watch over the cubs, they feed them. Each kitten has its own favorite sitter and will fight its siblings to keep it. The sitter not only turns up good meals, it turns them into good lessons. A scorpion makes challenging prey. Its sting can be deadly. Learning how to bite the stinger off takes practice and nerve. But in the desert, such a juicy meal is worth the risk. Another way strangers earn their way into the family is by doing sentry duty. Two or three animals share this job, relieving each other every few minutes. I see far in the desert, not all belong to meerkats. A warbled warning and the whole tribe skitters away.
Teamwork has once again saved the skins of one and all. The Meerkat family may be practical, but it's also emotionally close. Meerkats enjoy a fervent intimacy, grooming each other with their characteristic intensity. And when it's time to rest, they rest together. If the tiny meerkat has such close and complex relationships, what sort of families will we find among the animals most closely related to us? Enter the forests of Central Africa and retrace the steps of our ancestors back through time. Here lives our nearest relative in the world, the chimpanzee. Chimps and humans share 98% of their genes. Our kinship is unmistakable, clearly evident in a mother's tender affection for her baby. The bond between mother and infant is long-lived and strong. It is the core of chimp family life. From its mother, a young chimp learns vital social and practical skills. But learning can be fun. The love and support it receives from its mother gives the infant the confidence it needs to find its way in society. Its family includes older siblings, but it will never know which of the troop's males is its father. Adult males relate to one another along political rather than kinship lines. All chimp relationships are built through intimate physical contact, by grooming. Grooming seems just a way chimps help each other keep free of lice, but it's serious business. A delightfully sensual service, it makes friends and influences people. By watching who grooms whom, the whole hierarchy of chimp society becomes clear. Chimps low on the social ladder groom those higher up. Top-ranking chimps not only get groomed more often, they get first choice of mates and food. A mother's rank actually helps determine whether her offspring live or die. A young chimp learns the traditional grooming style of his troop. It's part of their unique culture. Male friends clasp hands while grooming each other, a gesture of friendship seen only among certain groups of chimps. <laughs> young chimps also learn about their society through play. They enjoy play as much as human children, but it's more than a good time. Play extends a chimp's physical abilities and helps it learn how to socialize with other chimps. Personalities are revealed. An aggressive youngster is likely to become an aggressive adult. For males, that's no handicap. impress allies and intimidate enemies through displays, stylized temper tantrums thrown to settle disputes. But sometimes displays aren't enough. Real fighting breaks out when subordinates join in a push against the dominant chimp. In moments, the social order is overturned as a new alliance of ruling males drive out the old.
a young chimp had best stay out of the way. Serious injuries, even deaths do occur. As the dust settles, combatants console each other, much as humans would. Another social grace the young chimp must master. It is the animals with the most intelligence that have the most to learn from their parents. Chimps even learn how to use tools. In the rainforests, they faced a dilemma, how to get at nutritious nuts with shells too hard for teeth to crack. Their ingenious technological solution? A hammer and anvil. They carry the nuts to a clearing with lots of exposed roots, ideal anvils. A chimp starts learning the proper technique at its mother's breast. A hammer of just the right shape and weight must be found, heavy enough to crack the shell without being too cumbersome. The mother tolerates such thievery. The delicious nut is incentive enough for the youngsters to soon start trying to crack nuts on their own. Lessons are informal. Mothers teach by example. It takes a decade to become an accomplished nutcracker. Chimps learn to use a toolkit specific to their group as part of the cultural legacy passed down from mother to child. There are advanced techniques to learn, using sticks as picks to pry out every last morsel. Some chimps even use stone hammers, similar to those used by primitive man. Mastering this skill provides its own rewards. It's another milestone on the road to independence. Preparing their child for that journey is the aim of every parent. A successful passage to adulthood requires not only skill, but luck and love. Parenting may be necessary for survival, but it's also the source of the most transcendent of emotions. The love shared by parent and child transformed their world. When a parent looks into its offspring's eyes, it is not vanity that sees its own reflection there. It is the recognition of their closeness in kinship and in purpose. Both want nothing more than to see the youngster succeed, to take its place in the next generation. Children, bright spirits that they are, continue a thread of life that reaches back through the eons to surface here with joy and hope for the future.
eggs. These precious eggs are her only chance that part of her will live into the future. She has held them in her tentacled embrace for half a year. She has not left them for an instant, not even to eat. Finally, the moment she has lived for has come. Her miniature offspring pulse away, but childhood is always a time of great peril. They will be a feast for others, but they were born. she rises. With tentacled arms 15 feet in length, the giant octopus may seem a creature of nightmare, but she is gentle at heart. For years she has stalked the reef preparing herself for what will be the single most important act of her life. In a secret lair in the rocky reef, she has laid her eggs. She breeds but one, born with the skills they need to survive if they have luck as well. The octopus produced enough young so that some are bound to escape the daily gauntlet of hungry mouths. But their mother will never know their fates. She's been drained of life by the effort of procreation. She is food herself now for impatient fish. Dying is the ultimate sacrifice for one's young, but if just one of the tens of thousands of these tiny creatures escapes to grow into a giant like its mother, a ghostly flyer through deep waters, her sacrifice won't be in vain. She will live on through her child and her grandchildren after that. Parents must defend their young from a world of troubles and teach them the skills they'll need to survive. In return, children bring a special joy and a new meaning to life. For out of the eternal bond between child and parent comes the most transcendent of emotions. By exploring nature's adventures in child rearing, precious insight into our own lives can be found in the family life of animals. vulnerability makes them irresistible. On their slim shoulders, they carry the hopes of a generation. They are their parents' only chance for immortality. Families are designed for the young, 
yet family life is filled with tragedy, brutality, and the sweetest of pleasures. Raising the young is life's greatest challenge. Parents struggle to care for and feed their offspring, whether it means spilling milk or blood.